All right, in this video, we are gonna play around with GeoGebra in 3D and create the TNB frame, or the Frenet, or Frenet, I think Frenet frame uh, for a uh, kind of a general curve. So we're gonna make it so that we're able to uh, change the component functions around. All right, so we don't wanna deal with 2D. So I'm gonna click over here, I'm gonna click these three dots. I'm going to choose 3D graphics then I'm going to click these three dots and choose close because I just want to work in 3D this time. Uh, I'm also going to right click here and turn the plane off because I kind of just don't like seeing that. Um, all right, so kind of good to go. We're going to need uh, a curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, three component functions and they're going to be functions of X, but that's okay. So F of X, let's say is just like sine of 2x. And g of x, I'm going to say is cosine of, I don't know, 3x. And then h of x is going to be, uh, I don't know, sine of uh, x again. All right. So what I want to do, I don't really need to see these. So I'm going to turn off, turn off, and turn off, and make a curve. And it'll be f of t, g of t, and h of t. And then t, and I want t to go from 0 to 2 pi because it'll give me the whole thing. Um, and I get this nice closed curve. And if depending on how you orient it, uh, I mean, I'm having trouble. It looks like, I think they're called Lisa Zhao curves, like this and like this. So it just depends on which, uh, which of the coordinate planes you're looking at this thing from. I'm going to turn off the label for this because you end up with just too many labels and they kind of like mess up the visuals. All right, so we have this. I want to put a unit tangent vector, right? So it's the T N B frame. So we need the unit tangent vector, the unit uh, normal vector, and then the unit binormal vector. So uh, first unit tangent vector. So I'm gonna find that one way and then I'm gonna do a weird thing where I basically like redefine it. Uh, but I think that this is the uh, kind of cleanest way to do this. So uh, I'm going to create my vector. So vector. So uh, while I was typing that, you get two different templates. One just has point, which will put a vector in component form, which means the initial point is always the origin. I don't want that in this case. What I want is a vector that starts at uh, a point on the curve A. So I'm going to say A of, I'm going to use V as my parameter. Uh, I haven't defined V anywhere. Uh, so it's going to, GeoGebra is going to create a slider when I press enter. So that's my initial point. My terminal point is going to be A of V, because that's the initial point, plus a unit vector, unit vector of uh, the derivative of A, right? So I, I basically, A is like our R of T, and the unit tangent vector is R prime divided by the magnitude of R prime, which is just a unit vector of R prime. So uh, since my curve is named A, I need to do A prime of V. When I press enter, it should give me a unit tangent vector. So it definitely gave me something. Uh, let's, let's turn this on. And you can see it's, it's always going like in the direction of increasing parameters. So I should make it so that my parameter always increases. So on the slider, click the dots, settings, click slider. And then uh, instead of oscillating, we want increasing and then close this and then go back and do it again so another weird thing is that my curve is really from 0 to 2 pi I mean it doesn't matter because this is a nice closed curve um, but I'm gonna make my slider go from 0 to 2 pi I did that I just clicked on uh, the negative 5 and this pops up and fix both of them you can tab between the fields and we get this all right so that's my unit tangent vector I think that using uh, colors to help encode this is a really good idea. So what I'll do is go to settings for this, for the unit tangent vector, which is called U in this case, um, and change my color. I'm gonna change the color to, so I'm gonna change it to red because the unit tangent vector sort of acts as a, the X axis for the TNB frame. Uh, so since GeoGebra uses red for the X axis, right, when you uh, set it up like this, follows the right hand rule. Uh, so I'm gonna use red for that. 
also, I see the label is on again or still on. I thought I turned that off. We get this. I think it would also be nice to see the point where everything is happening. So I'm just going to type A of V and a point shows up. I don't want to see the label. Ugh, labels, bane of my existence. There's an option where you just turn off all new labels. Maybe I should do that. Let's see. Uh, click here. Uh, settings. Uh, here, maybe. I don't know if you can hear the uh, cop car going past. Don't know what's going on out there. Uh, sort by blah, 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 blah. How about this? Show things. Uh, I feel like there's a setting for this. Oh, oh labeling. Jeez, it was right there. Labeling. I'm going to say no no new objects boom so maybe we don't have to wrestle with that anymore all right we'll see um okay so i have a point i have the unit tangent vector to that point now i need the unit normal vector so this is where uh things are going to get weird so i'm going to define a function that gives me the norm of r prime so the the magnitude of r prime so since GeoGebra named R A, I'm kind of finding the norm of the derivative of A. But I'm going to do it all in terms of functions that I know. So I'm going to call it D of X, square root of. So it's going to be F prime of X squared plus G prime of X squared plus H prime of X squared. And I don't really care what this looks like. So it disappears. It comes back. I'm going to turn it off because I don't really need to see it. I am now going to define a curve that basically gives me t, the unit tangent vector, as a function of t. So curve, so the unit tangent vector is r prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. So for r prime, the x component is f prime of t. Let me scroll up so you can see this. So is it that bottom corner? Really annoying. Uh, whoa, messed that up. Okay, so over d of t. This like error disappears eventually uh, because that's the magnitude, comma, g prime of t over d of t, comma, h prime of t over d of t. So I took the derivative of the component, so the numerator of this thing is kind of r prime, and then uh, divided by the magnitude because d of x is the magnitude of r prime. And then I'm going to go t, 0 to 2 pi. And I don't really care what this looks like, but it's kind of a cool looking curve. So let me just turn off this for a second. And you can just see it's like this weird, like circular-ish thing, uh, pretty neat. But what I wanna see is the actual curve and what I don't need to see is this curve. So I'm gonna turn it off. But that curve for any particular value of t is giving me the unit tangent vector. So for example, if I just do b, nope, if I do the vector b of v, Right, so that's just in component form. And let me animate this, turn on my slider, and then I'm gonna tilt it. You can see that it's always the same vector, but it always has the initial point at the origin, which is why it's not super useful to us in this case. Um, so I'm gonna stop this, and I'm actually just gonna delete that because I don't need it. All right, so what am I trying to get? I'm trying to get B, no, TN, I'm trying to get N right now. So n is uh, n is t the um, n is t prime over the magnitude of t prime. Okay, and b is the curve that's determining t at this point. I should really rename these, but I don't know a good way to rename them. So uh, what I usually do is on a sheet of paper next to the computer, I just write down what GeoGebra names everything so that I can use what it's what it's using. Um, and so you definitely might want to do that. Uh, but what I'm doing is vector. So this is going to feel like when we did the unit tangent vector. So vector, initial point is a of v, terminal point a of v plus unit vector b prime, right? So I want to take uh, the vector b, uh, I want to find its derivative and turn it so b prime of v. All right, did this work? I think it did. So and you can see we have a, a pair of orthogonal unit vectors. The red one is t, and let's change the currently black one to green, right? Because it's kind of the y-axis, or determines the y-axis for our new coordinate system. 
Um, and let's turn off, it doesn't have, oh yeah, because we said no new objects have labels. That's, that's a good move. All right, so we got this. So far, so good. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is definitely not necessary, but I'm gonna create the TN plane, which has another name, it's called the osculating plane. Uh, I'm gonna create that and I'm going to do it, I wish I hadn't done that. Uh, I'm gonna do it uh, parametrically. So this is gonna be really gross. I'm gonna make a surface. And so what I need is a point. The point is gonna be A. So I need to be able to capture the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and Z coordinates of the point A. But I can do that by just typing X of A, Y of A, um, and Z of A. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna to add to it, uh, you know, let me just do it, right? So X of A plus, uh, all right, T1, so it's a surface, so I need two parameters. T1, I want the X coordinate of the unit tangent vector, which I think is named U, it is. So I want the X coordinate of U plus T2, a second parameter, times the X coordinate of W, which is basically B. And then Y of A plus T1 times Y of U plus T2 times Y of W. And we're almost done. So uh, Z of A plus, so I'm writing a plane parametrically. So if you've never done that before, I definitely have a video on that. I suggest you check it out. It's a really nice way of writing equations of planes when you have two vectors that are in the plane rather than having the uh, normal vector, which definitely would have worked here. Um, but let me finish this. T1 times X of U plus T2 times, uh, nope, not X, I want Z, Z of U, T2 times Z of W. All right, now I need to let T1 be my first parameter. I'm just gonna make a really tiny part of the plane, so I'm gonna go from zero to one. And then I'm gonna let T2 also go from zero to one. And you can see, uh, part of why I do this, it's just like this cute little section of a plane that has shown up. Uh, and we, I mean, you can make it bigger if you if you don't like things to be cute. Uh, we can like make this two and make this two and it'll be bigger. Um, but I want it to be small and cute. So I'm gonna turn it back into one and one. So this is a little piece of the osculating plane, the TN. So the osculating plane has a, a normal vector that is the unit binormal vector. So that's the vector that's normal to this plane. Um, and that is gonna be the cross product of T and N. But let me animate this so you can kind of watch it move around. So it's just taking this little plane with it. And if we turn off the axes, kind of looks a little better, maybe. You can, whatever, you can watch it. All right, so the last thing we wanna do here is um, create N, no, T, N, we wanna create B. Uh, I am messing those up frequently, uh, but if you're still with me, uh, good job. So I'm turning the axes back on so we have some sense of what's happening here. But it's like this little coordinate system that moves around with the point A. There's always a vector we can use as our x-axis, where I'm putting air quotes around x-axis, a vector we can use as our y-axis with air quotes, and so our x-axis is sort of determined by t. Our y-axis is sort of determined by um, n, and then the z-axis for this coordinate system will be b, the unit binormal vector. So that one actually is kind of the easiest one to get because we already have u and w, the unit tangent and unit um, normal vectors. So what I'm gonna do is just create a vector. I want its initial point to be a of v. I want its terminal point to be a of v plus, GeoGebra can find cross products, which is awesome. So I'm gonna do cross and I can use vector, vector, or point, 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 point. No, what is cross ratio? I don't even wanna know. Cross, we just wanna cross two vectors. So cross, uh, so the vectors are u and w. I'm gonna press enter, and you can see we have a vector that popped up. It doesn't have a label because we uh, told it not to label anything. Good move. I'm gonna make this blue because it's kind of the z axis, like this, and then let's hit play. And you can see there's this neat little 3D coordinate system moving around with our point. It's called the TNB frame. So 
it's just named after the three vectors, right? Like our coordinate system is x, y, z, which uses the vectors i, j, and k. Uh, this system, or t, n, b, uses kind of t, n, and b. So they're all orthogonal to each other. They're all unit vectors. We put in the surface to show you the osculating plane, which is the plane that contains t and n and has normal vector b. Um, and I just think this is a really nice visual. And by doing this, if you really think about what you're doing, you kind of learn a lot about, um, a, a little bit about GeoGebra. I mean, kind of, maybe a lot about GeoGebra, but definitely you have to think through what's happening with all these vectors. Um, they're all interrelated. Uh, anyway, that's the whole thing. I hope you uh, found this helpful and good luck.